Dear students, welcome back to quantitative aptitude discussion of CVT model exam. So, here also we are considering 25 uh, very important and tricky questions from the quantitative aptitude area. In most of the questions, you have to create a basic idea. At the same time, we have to approach the questions in a proper logical manner. Some of the very important and advanced level kind of uh, questions also uh, we can see in this set of questions. Not all the questions are very easy. So, with the help of these ideas, uh, you can make an improvement in your further approaches or performances. So, here we can consider our first question. Ajay writes 100 whole numbers from 100 to 199. How many ones does he write exactly two times? There are various kinds of uh, similar type of questions you can expect in various competitive exams. Here, this question it contains exactly two times. That's a very important point. On the base of this concepts, we have to develop the idea. So here, the numbers from 100 to 199, you just think about which will be the such a first number. It contains exactly two ones, exactly two ones. It won't be less than two or more than two. So exactly two ones. So which is such first number, no doubt the first such number is 110. Got it? So that is 110, is it? No. So before that, there is one number. What is that number? That's equal to 101. So therefore, here we just consider such first number that is equal to 101. So if you are considering the numbers like this, 101. So at that time, we will get the ideas like this. If it will be 101 is such number, first number, then which will be the next such number? So next such number that's equal to 110. So how we can arrange the numbers like this 101 and there is 111 is there in that pattern and 121 is there. So 131. So like that. So there are up to 191. At the same time, if you are considering the next type of numbers, there we know that the number like 110 is there. 111, 100 and so the next one that will be equal to this is 112, 113 and so on up to 119. So this is the formation. So while we are considering this set of numbers, we know that this number 111, it contains three ones. Therefore, we cannot take that as the set of required numbers. So therefore, we just consider how many numbers here while we are counting it horizontally. Here we have nine numbers. How it is? So you just simply count, consider the middle value of these expressions, zero. This is two, three, etc. up to nine. So therefore, in total, it contains nine such possible values. Similarly, vertically also, here we just consider the unit place digit of these numbers. Excluding this 111 while we are considering zero to nine. How many numbers there? There are also nine numbers. So what's the total number of such possibility? So therefore, the total possibility that is nine plus nine, such 18 numbers there. So the answer is option three. So here understand that's a case of exactly. Suppose if the question may ask like this at least two times, at that time we can include this 111 also. But it's exactly two times, therefore we have to exclude that 111. So, goes to the next question. If the difference between the compound interest and simple interest at the end of two years is rupees 100. So, what is the principle? A rate is 5 percent per annum. In both the cases, assume same principle for both the cases. We already learned that concept. So, in various so many papers. So, difference between simple interest and compound interest for two years, for two years. So just recall the result that is P into R by 100, the whole square. P into R by 100, the whole square. So that's the result. Apply that result for finding the answer. So here R by 100, the whole square. So here it is given that the rate of interest is 5%. We need to find out the principal value. So therefore, as per the given data, P into 5 by 100, the whole square, 
is equal to 100 rupee. So you can easily find out the value here. Here what is 5 by 100? We can simplify them. So that is simply P into 1 by 20 the whole square is equal to 100. Or this is simply P is equal to what is 20 square? 20 square is equal to 400 and put these two zeros. So therefore that is equal to rupees 40,000. Just recall this result. So it's a direct application of that result. Now third question. The power value of the shares of company X and Y is rupees 10. The market price of the shares are rupees 40 and rupees 50 respectively. Find the ratio of the return on investment. For an investor, if the dividends are 20% and 40% respectively, investment in both the cases is the same. Maybe you already learned the concept of as shares, stocks and shares in your school level. But most of the students are unaware about the concepts because very rarely only this area, this kind of questions appear in most of the competitive exams. But even though we have to prepare it properly. So it's a very simple basic concept. So I just give the basic idea. Here first of all we have to consider the concept. What is this power value? Power value in this context they are expecting that's the face value of the share. Face value of the share in the sense that the price actually certified in that share by the company when it's initial offer itself. So that's the certified value of each share. So in this case, if you are considering the case of X and Y, so here are the shares X and Y. So if you are considering the face value, face value, so phase value of x is rupees 10 and that of y is also rupees 10. Actually, this phase value act in the form of the cost to price of a product. Sorry, that's the printed price of the product. That's not the cost, that's the printed price of the product. But in the share, so there the market prices we have to consider as the cost. Suppose if you need to purchase such a share, you have to spend 40 rupees for the first share and 50 rupee for the second share. So those values are called market value. So that is market value. So this first share it cost rupees 40 and second share it cost rupees 50. Hope you got the idea. Actually the certified price of the share is rupees 10 each but this perform the shares performance is better that's why its market value increased to 50. If you need to Oh, such a share you have to spend 50 per share that's a simple logic so for this one you have to spend 40 per share so that's the basic idea then after that the next concept we are moving to the next concept that's the concept of dividend what is this dividend we know that the shares are offered by companies so their annual profit or this their periodical profit they will distribute as per the number of shares or the units of shares so here, this dividend as the profit shares, profit shares, it's actually distributed by the company. So 20% for this X and 40% for Y. So here are the dividends. This first one, that is 20% and the second one, that is 40%. So dividends in the sense, this is 20% of the face value. That's the important point. Because this fluctuation occurred, this market value, it may vary, it depends upon the requirement or the performance of the company, like that its uh, demand will increase or decrease. So like that, the fluctuations will occur here. But the company gave a worth of 10 rupee per share. Therefore, this dividend is directly applicable on this 10 rupee. That means this is 20% of 10 and this is 40% of 10. So what is 20% of 10? So that's simple, that is 2 rupee. What is 40% of 10? That is simply 4 rupee. Got it? So then we have to find out. So and investment in both the cases is same. So at that time we have to find out the ratio of the return on investment for an investor if the dividends are this much. So how to find out it? So here. That's a simple logic. If you need to find out 
what is the ratio of the return. So it is given that their investments are equal. That means equal amount they invested in these two schemes. At that time, we have to find out the ratio of their dividends. So therefore, returns. Returns in the sense, these are the returns. Suppose we just consider this person invested rupees 200 here. So here, five shares from this uh, segment or and four shares from this type. So like that, we have to consider the total payment. So therefore, we just consider the ratio of returns. You just simply compare the percentage of return there. So that's called yield percentage. So you have to compare the percentage of return will be like this. So that is the ratio of this ratio of returns. So how to do it? So here we know that so per share, 2 rupee the return and the amount he spent for share that is 40 is 2. Second case, 4 rupee out of amount spent for share that is 50. So this is a simple concept. So while we are simplifying this one, this is equal to. So here we can simplify the values in the form. So this is 2 by 40 and 4 by 50 that is simply 2 by 4 is to 4 by 5. Again, we can simplify it. This is 1 by 2. So then just make a cross multiplication. This is 5 is to 8. So this is the ratio of their returns. Therefore, the answer is option 1. Here, how we converted this operation like this, we just compare the percentages, percentages, if you want to make it as a percentage, we just multiply these values by 100. Instead, we are considering, so 2 out of 40, that's the return here. Here, 4 out of 50, that's the return here. That's the yield percentage in proportional or the fractional form. So what is the percentage of yield from the first share or share X, that is 2 by 40 into 100. And that of the second share, that is 4 by 50 into 100. So we can avoid both the hundreds for making it as a ratio. So therefore, finally, we will get the ratio becomes 5 is to 8. So that's the type of operation or uh, these types of operations. And the next question, how many kilograms of rice costing rupees 9 per kilogram must be mixed with the 27 kilogram of rice costing rupees 7 per kilogram so that 10% gain may be obtained by selling the mixture at rupees 9 per Point two four, So here, the final selling price of the mixture, that is 9.24 per kilogram. So you have to find out what is the cost price here. So this is, there is a profit of 10%. Therefore, we can conclude this one. So what is the relationship here? This is 110% of the cost price of the mixture. That's the logic so if this is 110, because 10% gain, 10% gain means we just add that 10% with 100. So therefore, here we can directly reach what is the cost price here. Cost price in the sense that that's the cost price of the final mixture after mixing both the varieties together. So that is simply 9.24 divided by 110 into 100. So while we are simplifying this one, so here we'll get 92.4 divided by 11. So that is 8 is there, so 88 will be there. So 88, then 44 will be there, that is 4, 8.4. So this is the cost price per kilo of the final mixture. That's a very important point. Whenever we are approaching similar type of question, if it is given that the final transaction made a certain percentage of profit or loss, you have to reach the cost price at first. Then after that, how we can tackle these types of question? That's the application of allegation. So that's the application of allegation here. So what is the method of allegation in such a type of question? So here, the first variety, it cost 9 rupee. And the second variety, it cost 7 rupee. Now we have the average price of this mixture that has 8.4 rupee. So you just take the differences here. What is the differences between these two values that's equal to 1.4? And what's the difference here that's equal to 0.6? So we have this ratio, 1.4 is to 0.6. 
So of further simplifying this one, what is 1.4 is to 0.6 that is 14 is to 6 or simply that is 7 is to 3 that is 7 is to 3. Then you just connect it. It is given that 27 kilogram of the second variety that means this 3 is representing this 3 is representing 27 kilogram. So then what we have to find out what this 7 represents. So you just simply check the relationship here. If 3 is representing 27 kilogram what 7 represents. So here we know that 3 into 9 will be equal to 27. Therefore, 7 into 9 that is equal to 63 kilogram. So that is the answer. So here the answer is 63 kilogram that is option 4. So understand that concept of allegation. First step we have to reach the conclusion of the cost price of that mixture. After that we have to allocate the cost prices. Cost prices here 9 rupee that is the cost price of the first variety. 7 rupee that is the cost price of the second variety. Then 8.4 that is the cost price of the mixture or the resultant mixture. Then compare. Then you will get the ratio of weightages. Ratio of weightages in the sense. So this is the ratio of the quantities which we are purchasing the first variety and the second variety. It is given that the second variety it is uh, purchased with 27 kilogram then we have to find out the first variety. So that is the simple application of allegation. So now move to the next question. Again build a wall in 15 days which we alone can build in 20 days. If they build it together and get a total payment of rupees 189 how much is B's share? In such a question it is a question related to remuneration from the topic time and work. Here we just consider the time requirement as well as the efficiencies of these two persons A and B. So what is the time they required? It is given that whenever they are doing the works individually A can build a wall in 15 days while B can build it in 20 days. So we are framing the ratio between the number of days or oh, that is the ratio of the time the required for the completion of a certain piece of work. So while simplifying this one we know that this is simply 3 is to 4. As we know the ratio of efficiency is the inverse of ratio of time. So therefore what is the ratio of efficiency here? So if you are considering their efficiency. So that is simply 4 is to 3. So if the time requirement is 3 is to 4, then the ratio of efficiency as 4 is to 3. So understand the situation properly. Here, if they together completed a certain piece of work and the amount distributed, so that distribution as per the ratio of the quantity of work done. So how much quantity each completed there as per that quantity of work, this amount will be distributed. So whenever they are working together, think about which parameter will be a constant. So at that time, time is constant. Each of them spent equal time for the completion of the work. Depends upon their efficiency. So the more efficient person can complete more quantity of work. Therefore, he is eligible to get more share. So therefore, that is a logic here. So this efficiency is same as ratio of efficiency is same as the ratio of remunerations. Ratio of efficiency is same as ratio of remuneration when the time is constant because this is the ratio of the quantity of work done. So for this ratio we have to distribute the amount and we have to find out the share of B out of the total 189 rupee. So then how we can do it? Therefore the share of B share of B. So B's share is represented by 3 out of a total of 4 plus 3. 4 plus 3 that is equal to 7 of 189. That is a basic ratio application. Here we just simplify this one. So this is simply 3 into. We know that 2 times of 7 that will be equal to 14. Then 49 will be there that is 27. So what is the value here? 3 into 7 that is 21. So therefore this is 81. So rupees 81 that is the share of B. So here time
times ratio, its inverse is efficiency ratio. That is same as ratio of remuneration. Now the next question. A square and an equilateral triangle are inscribed in a circle of radius r. Then the sides are in the ratio. So here we just consider two situations. A square as well as a circle. Inscribed in a circle, we have to consider the diagram separately. First of all, we just consider the diagram with a square inscribed in such a figure. A square inscribed in a circle. Got it? So here, the radius. Here we know that the radius. So radius is R. If this radius is R, then we can conclude this one. This is the diagonal. Diagonal will be equal to 2R. So diagonal. diagonal that is 2R and side of this square that is A. Then what is the relationship between diagonal and side? So diagonal is nothing but A root 2. Got it? So therefore we can find out the side of this square in terms of radius. So therefore A equal to 2R by root 2. So that is simply root 2R. So that is root 2R. Similarly, we have to consider this is the first conclusion. Then we have to consider the second situation. In the second situation, we are considering a triangle, a, an equilateral triangle inscribed in a circle. An equilateral triangle inscribed in a circle. So there we are considering the radius. So radius as R. So therefore, we just make it as a right circle, right angle. So therefore, in which way we can consider the angle distribution in this diagram? This angle is 30 degree and this angle is 60 degree and this is right angle. So what is the distribution of the sides in a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle? What will be the distribution there? So in a 30, 60, 90 degree, the sides are in the ratio this side opposite to 30 degree is represented by 1, side opposite to 60 degree is represented by root 3 and side opposite to the right angle that will be equal to 2. That is a very important ratio 1 is to root 3 is to 2. Here we just consider if this side or the radius is 2 units at that time the side of this triangle side of this triangle. If this half portion is root 3, this half portion is another root 3. So if this radius is 2 units, then the side of the triangle is 2 root 3. So if radius is 2 units, so that means if the radius and side, we have to connect it. If radius is 2 units, then the side of this triangle is 2 root 3. Instead, if the radius is r unit, then what will be the side of this triangle? So easily we can conclude that is r root 3 or that is root 3 r. So that is our requirement. Here we just consider these two measures. Here side of this first figure that is the side of the square is root 2 r and side of the triangle is root 3 r. So we have to find the ratio between these two quantities. Therefore, the required ratio. What is the ratio here? Then the sides are in the ratio. So therefore, the required ratio. So that means ratio between sides. So how it is? So that is equal to root 2r is to root 3r. What it will become? Root 2 is to root 3. So this is the answer. So this way we can conclude our answer. The answer is option 2. So that is the relationship. Here we are applying this Pythagorean triplet or that is the basic application of trigonometry. With the help of trigonometry also you can reach a conclusion. Here without the application of trigonometry by using this basic standard ratio itself we can find it. While doing uh, these types of questions, the very important requirement, you have to recall the basic results and relationship uh, from the area of geometry.
Now, okay, let's look at the second next question, seventh question. The spring balance of a trader showed one kilogram for 900 gram. Find the profit or loss percentage if the trader marks up the price 10 percent above the cost price. Here, what do you have to do in such a question? You, now, you are familiar those types of so many questions we have done. So, we can directly consider what's the uh, uh, changes make while uh, we are weighing product or the goods. Here, giving only 900 gram instead of 1 kilogram, there is a 10 percent decrease, decrease in weight. Got it? That is the first point, 10 percent decrease in weight. So, what is the second practice here? So, there is a profit or making charging 10 percent more than its usual cost price. So, that is the second point, there is 10 percent more price or increase in price. increase in price. So, while considering these two points together, these two activities make him a gain. So, how we can consider this one? 10 percent decrease in weight means, so that means the selling price of 90 percent, selling price of 90 percent of goods because 10 percent decrease there. This is equal to what the customer should pay that is the cost price of 110 percent. That is a simple direct application. Selling price of 90 percent. What is this 90? So, there is the deduction of this 10 percent in weight. What is this increase to 10 percent? That is the price charged more here. So, therefore, we can directly write this one. Selling price by cost price that is equal to 110 by 90. 110 by 90. Oh, that we can simplify further as 11 by 9. So, now we are familiar. So, this types of situation, we have the ratio between selling price and cost price. Then, how to find out the profit percentage? This selling price is how much more than cost price? So, this is 2 more, 2 more, right? Out of 9. So, then what is the profit percentage? So, it is a profit in this situation. What is the profit percentage here? That is, this 2 is what percentage of 9? So, that is 2 by 9 into 100. It is a quite familiar value. 2 by 9 is 22 and 2 by 9 percent or 22.22 percent. 22.22 percent. So, our answer is 22.22 percent profit. So, just recall the concept of that ratio wise approach because we are frequently uh, we'll get the questions like this and that and you can directly reach the conclusion. So, next is a question from Bert Mass. We know that the hierarchy of mathematical operations, so which operations we have to perform at first. On the base of that thing, we can do this one while we are considering the step of operations, which will be the first operation. So, we know that the hierarchy of mathematical operations are Bert Mass. Bert Mass. Here bracket we have to operate first. That means this 110 by 11. So that we have to do at first. So I just rewrite the question here. This is 10 into 36 of 1 by 3 minus 110 by 11 into 3 plus 52. So, this entire outer uh, square bracket, there is no meaning of that thing because there is not any other operations outside that square bracket. So, first you have to do the operations from this division process. What is 110 by 11? That is 10. Got it? So, then which will be the second operation? That is of operation. What is 1 by 3? Of or 36 of 1 by 3. That is simply 36 into 1 by 3. That will be equal to 12. So, we can fill rest all the operations here. This is 10 into 12 minus 10 into 3 plus 52. Got it? So, then we can further simplify this one. So, the next step of operations are multiplications. 10 into 12, that is 120 minus 10 into 3, that is 30. And finally, 52. 
So then the next step of operation will be like that we can compare it together. So whenever it's the case of addition and subtraction, uh, if you are following the rule, what do you have to do? First of all, you have to add. Add in the sense, never misinterpret that, never misinterpret that. Here the addition of same kind of values. Same kind of values means only you have to add the positive values together and negative values together. Then finally, we have to find the difference. So like that, we have to consider. So, but here we can do it directly. What is 20, 120 minus 30? That is 90. 90 plus 52. So what will be the value? 90 plus 52, that's equal to 142. So the answer, it's not there in the given set of options. Therefore, the answer is none of these. So next question, it's again from time and work. If 15 men working nine hours a day can reap a field in 16 days, how many days will 18 men reap the same field working eight hours a day? So there we can apply the result m1 d1 h1 m1 into d1 into h1 so that is equal to m2 into d2 into h2 so that means m1 men working d1 days can complete h1 uh, a certain piece of work in h1 hours per day and m2 men working d2 days h2 hours per day can complete the same piece of work then we can equate these two quantities because the works or the quantities of works are same. So while we are filling the data from the given question, here 15 men, 15 men, 9 hours a day and 16 days and 9 hours a day can reap the field. The same quantity of work can be completed by 18 men, can reap the same field working 8 hours per day. We need to find out the number of days. I just consider the number of days by using the letter expressing that as n and here 8 hours per day. So look at this arrangement you can easily find out the value of n. Here n is simply so that is 15 into 16 into 9 divided by 18 into 8. So while simplifying this one we know that this is 2 times here and 2 into 9, 18. So we can combine it like this. So therefore, the answer will become 15. So that is 15 days. Therefore, the answer is first option. 10th question, what is the remainder? When 9, 8, 7, 5, 3, 4, 7, and 7, 4, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 5, 7, 8, 9, 7, 4, 3, the product is divided by 4. So you just recall the rules of divisibility by 4. As well as we have to consider the concept of remainder property. So here our question is like this. So when we divide such a big operation 9875347 into 74035789 into 57897743. When we divide this product by 4 which will be the remainder. Got it? This we are going to find out. Clear? So for finding the step of operation, we know that the divisibility rules related to 4. Just recall, what is the divisibility rule for 4? Only we have to consider the last two digits, last two digits of the given number. So while we are considering this last two digits, simply observe 47 by 4, which will be the remainder. 47 by 4. We know that 44 will be the nearest multiple of 4 in this range. So remainder 3 will be there. Here the remainder is 3. 89 by 4. Think about which will be the remainder. So we know that 88 is the maximum possible multiple in that range. Multiple of 4 in that range. Therefore here the remainder is 1. 43 by 4 the remainder is 3. So therefore the answer is very simple. That is a product of these values. That's the consistency concept of remainder. If we have the numbers like this and the product will provide the remainder, the entire product will provide the remainder. That is same as the product of these individual remainders. So therefore, here the remainder. So that is simply 3 into 1 into 3. But what's the problem here? This number is again greater than 4. So what do you have to do? We just divide it by 4 again. So we know that this is simply remainder 
of 9 by 4. So, because 3 into 3, that's equal to 9. 9 by 4, what will be the value? 9 by 4. The remainder is 1, hence the answer is option 1. So, next question. If you pick up two numbers out of first 29 multiples of 11, what is the probability that the product of these two numbers is divisible by 3, 2, 6, 7? So, this is one of the most challenging questions in this set. Uh, it will take time. Logically, you have to develop the counting. It's based on the basic counting principles. Actually, it's an application of probability, even though its logic lies in the area of basic counting principles. Uh, we have to find out how we have to classify those two numbers because its product should be equal to 3, 2, 6, 7. First of all, you just consider what is the total number of selections here? Out of 29 such multiples, we are selecting two numbers. Got it. So, that is total number of selections. Total number of selections means out of 29 numbers, we are selecting two numbers. Actually, as per this question uh, from the options, there is not any uh, separations. While we are considering the set of options, in each option, we know that the denominator is 29 C2. So, it won't make any uh, fruitful conclusions from the set of options or sometimes we may get if the denominators are different. So, at that time, this first understanding or inference will help us to reach the conclusion. But here, all the options have the same denominator. Therefore, we have to move further. So, that's the most trickiest part. Here, we have two numbers two numbers are those are multiples of 11. So, therefore, we can consider those numbers are 11x and the another number is 11y. It is given that the product is a multiple of 3, 2, 6, 7. So, this is 3, 2, 6, 7, k. Why we put k there? That's not exactly b equal to 3, 2, 6, 7. It's possible to become 3, 2, 6, 7. But more clearly, that's a multiple of 3, 2, 6, 7. Got it? It should be divisible by 3, 2, 6, 7. In the sense, that's a multiple of 3, 2, 6, 7. We have to consider in the inverse order because 0 won't be there in the list. So, the product won't be equal to 0. Therefore, we have to consider that this final or the product will be a multiple of 3, 2, 6, 7. So, then here we will get this is what is the value of x, y here. So, that is simply 3, 2, 6, 7, 6, 7 by what is this one? 11 into 11, that is equal to 121. So, which are the rest portion there? So, while we are considering this rest portion, that will be equal to x, y equal to, uh, which will be the value when we divide it by 121. So, here, if you are considering this one, this is 2 times of 121, that's equal to 242. And consider the difference here, this is 4, this is 8. So, then this is 840. 7. So, which will be the next step of operation here. So, next step of operation here, we know that this is 7 times of 121 that is 847. Got it. So, here we can write this as 27k. So, our requirement 11x into 11y. So, that should be equal to 3267k. That means that is a multiple of 3267. For satisfying this condition, this x into y should be equal to 27k. And whether there are any restriction for this k, so whether there are any restriction for this k or whether there are any restriction for x and y, so like that we have to consider. So here, while we are considering this possibility, so this x and y will be, so the values will be less than 29, like that we have to consider. So, therefore, less than 29, how many such possible values of x and y we can consider? So, here, x or y, x or y, they are less than or equal to 29. This is the condition. So, how we can distribute this one? Here, we just consider the classifications of x and y. So, I just classify it like this, x. So, with the help of, with, with respect to x, what is the possible value of y? I am going to tabulate the values here. So, the first possibility here we just consider. When we consider x equal to 27, that is one possibility. If x equal to 27, 
which are the possible values of k or y sorry then which are the possible values of y here y it can be 1 2 3 etc except 27 so 27 won't be there so then 28 can be the value 29 also be there so understand the concept when x equal to 27 these are the possibilities these are the possibilities got it so these are the possible values of y how many such possibilities there that's the important point here while we are considering there are 29 numbers except 27 why except 27 if x is 27 y also be 27 what will happen both the numbers will become equal but here we are considering we are taking or selecting two numbers by default those two numbers are different because we are selecting two numbers or if we are selecting one number one multiple of 11 that won't exist to there so we have to select another one number therefore the repetition won't be there so therefore there are how many such numbers there are 28 possibilities there are 28 possibilities can you guess which will be the next possibility here if you are considering this x as 9 if x as 9 so what will be the next possibility our requirement we have to make the product of x and y as multiple of 27 as multiple of 27 not exactly 27 as a multiple of 27 so if x itself is 27 there is not any separate restriction for y that's why we are selecting all these possibilities and for avoiding the repetition only we are exem giving exemption to this 27 so if it is 9 what will be the next step so this y should be a multiple of 3 then only it's possible y should be a multiple of 3 then only it's possible so therefore if you are considering all the multiples of 3 from the list 3 6 except 9 for avoiding the repetition 12 15 so then 18 and 21 24 27 is there got it so here do we need to consider any exception so we have to accept this last 27 also because we already count it so therefore there is an exception of 27 because we already count that possibility in the first row so how many possibilities here in total we just consider so here one two three four five six seven such possibilities so here we have seven such possibilities then move to the third step so what is the next step we just consider so nine is another multiple suppose 18 is there 18 is such a multiple so then what is the requirement again again the remaining value of y should be a multiple of three because nine is here so we have to fill it with another one three so therefore the possible values are three here six here so we have to exclude nine because we already took that possibility and this 12 here 15 here exclude 18 this time because this value is 18 itself so then 21 is there 24 is there so exclude 27 because we already took it so then what is the number of possibilities here while we are considering this set of numbers here we have six such numbers so in total there are this many possibilities so while we are adding these all possibilities what will be the value here so while we are adding 28 plus 7 plus 6 so that's equal to 41 possibilities clear so here what will be the answer while we are doing this type of an operation here this will be so therefore the total number of possibilities how to do it A required probability so therefore the required probability we know that total number of favorable outcomes that has 41 and the total number of outcomes total number of outcomes we already found that is 29 c2 29 c2 so this is the answer hence the answer is 41 out of 29 c2 is a tricky most time consuming type of question i already mentioned such a point so whenever we are doing similar type of questions it will take too much time so therefore you have to practice it well these types of questions you have to make a 
prior preparations otherwise at the time of exam so this kind of questions are most time consuming first of all whenever you are approaching similar type of counting questions what you have to do you just strategically skip that question at particular point of time then after that you can return to this question whenever you complete rest all the operations like that you can save your time otherwise what will happen there are lots of tricky concepts here even after that also we may think about different possibilities there are possibilities like this if x is a multiple of 3 and y is a multiple of 9 yeah, it's there it's there because here which is x and which is y so that order doesn't matter so therefore we consider x as 9 so that same as y as 9 at that time what will happen x will become a multiple of 3 that's the same condition here Similarly, the second next condition also be the thing. So like that, this many total possibilities on the base of this possibility, we can raise the conclusions there. And 12th question is a question from geometry, but an easiest type of question. Here, if the adjacent figure AE perpendicular to ED, AE perpendicular to ED, and ED is 13 centimeter, is ED perpendicular to ED, and CD is equal to 3 centimeter, DZ perpendicular to BZ, and CB equal to 2 centimeter, A equal to 11 centimeter, find the length of AB. So here we just join these points together. So while we are considering joining these two points together. So here, if we are joining here, yes. So here we know that what will be these measures. Now I am naming this side as F, F. So I just redraw that figure here. So now we are considering only the triangle, only the triangle, this A, B, F. So that is A, B and F, got it. So what is this A, F? That is equal to 11 minus this 3. So this is 11 minus 3. So therefore 8 centimeter. What is this BF? That is this 13 plus 2. So this is 13 plus 2, which is equal to 15 centimeter. Then we have to find out this measure AB. There you can apply Pythagoras theorem. Or if you are well aware about the Pythagorean triplet, with the help of that Pythagorean triplet, you can easily reach the conclusion. So that is, you just recall the Pythagorean triplet, that is 8 is to 15 is to 17. What is Pythagorean triplet? So that's the ratio or the possible ratio of a right angle to triangle. If it's two measures, means non-hypotenuse sides, it's altitude and base. So they are in the ratio 8 and 15, then the third value of the hypotenuse will become 17. So therefore here we can conclude our answer is 17. If you don't know this Pythagorean triplet, what you have to do, you just simply apply the Pythagoras theorem for finding the answer. Here this AB, AB, so that is equal to root of base square plus altitude square. Here base is 15, therefore 15 square plus altitude square, that is 8 square. So this is 225 plus 64, it's whole root, so which is equal to 289. So what is the square root of 289? That is 17. So therefore the measure of hypotenuse, that will be equal to 17 centimeter. Okay, then move to the next question. Here, in how many ways can three integers, three integers, three integers be selected from the set 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. 37 such that the sum of the three integers is an odd number. Here first of all we just consider here we have 37 numbers. So total 37 numbers. Out of this 37 numbers how many of them are odd and how many of them are even? Here 19 odd numbers, 19 odd numbers and 18 even numbers in this list. 19 odd numbers and 18 even numbers. Here, if we need to get the sum as an odd number, there are two cases we can consider. So the first case, all three odd numbers. So all the selected numbers are odd, all three odd numbers. And what is the second condition? So second condition is simple. That is, there is 
one odd number one odd number and two even number so these are the two conditions so we are considering this arrangement or this kinds of a selection if you are considering the first thing that is all are odd numbers versus the total number of selections here we have 19 such odd numbers we have to select three numbers from there that is 19 c3 what about the second selection that is one odd number and two even numbers we have 19 odd numbers therefore this is 19 c1 and so here and is multiplication of two even numbers two even numbers that is 18 c2 so these are the possibilities we have to add these two uh, selections number of selections together therefore the total number of ways we can consider so therefore the total number of ways so that is simply 19 c3 plus the product of these values that is 19 c1 into 18 c2 so just expand this one 19 c3 is nothing but 19 into 18 into 70 divided by 1 into 2 into 3 so this is 19 c3 and plus what is 19 c1 19 itself 19 c1 is 19 itself what is 18 c2 so that is 18 into 17 divided by 1 into 2 so consider this operation here we know that this 1 into 2 into 3 so that is equal to 6 6 we can cancel here this is 3 times of 6 and here we know that this 2 we can cancel here this is 9 so we have to add up together at that time we know that this 19 and 17 is common so only we have to add up this 3 and 9 so what will be the value here so here this is simply so 19 into 17 that is common into so just add 3 and 9 so 3 plus 9 that's equal to 12 so just multiply it together so while we are doing the multiplications so simply consider which will be the unit digit of this operation if you are considering 2 into 7 that is 4 4 into 9 it becomes 6 so therefore look at the options which options have its unit digit as 6 there is only one such number so that's a favorable situation therefore the answer is option 1 so you just simply multiply it together so if you need to find out it first of all you just consider what is 19 into 17 first we are considering what is 19 into 17 just multiply it together 9 into 7 63 6 is there so then next one 9 to 1 9 plus 6 15 15 plus 7 22 2 is there 1 plus 2 that is 3 so 3 into 12 and multiply it with 12 so 2 into 3 6 2 into 2 4 plus 3 7 2 into 3 6 plus 2 8 last 2 itself so the answer is 3 8 7 6 like this way we can do the operations and the selection so that the application of combination that's a very important point clear so in the next question simple interest on a sum at 4 percent per annum for two years is 80 Find the compound interest on the same sum for the same period at the same rate of interest. So here the same amount or same period and same rate of interest. So on a certain sum, here we just consider what is the net simple interest for this two period, two years period. So this simple interest for two years. So it is given that 4% per annum. Therefore, if it is the case of simple interest, that is simply 4 plus 4. So, 4 plus 4, that is 8% in total. But at the same time, if we are considering the case of compound interest, so compound interest for 2 years, how it will become? So, they are the case of successive variation. You have to understand, there is a concept like this. This is 4 plus 4, again plus this 4 into 4 by 100. So just recall the result. If two variations like x percent and y percent, 
So the net variation will become x plus y plus x into y by 100. So that's the concept of successive variation. So this much percentage. So while we are doing this one, this is equal to 8.16 percent. So this is the compound interest or the net rate of interest for two years that is 8 percent. As per compound interest, net rate of interest for two years as 8.16, understand this concepts. So therefore, we have to find out the amount or the interest received under compound interest. If the interest received under simple interest just rupees 80, how we can directly connect it? This 8% is representing rupees 80. So then you can easily connect it. What this 8.16 represents? We know that 8 into 10 will be equal to 80. Similarly, 8.16 into 10, what will be the value here? So here that is 81.6. So here the answer is first option. So easily we can tackle this question with the help of this type of a result. So understand this compound interest for two years at R percent per annum, that is R plus R plus, this is R into R, that means R square by 100 percent. Or more clearly, that is 2R plus R square by 100 percent, if it will be the case of same rate of interest. So this is a tricky and easiest way uh, to reach uh, this kinds of a question's conclusion. So the next question, a sum of money doubles itself in 7 years. So what do you have to do? You just put 100, then it becomes 200. So what is the increase here? There is an increase of 100. It occurred in 7 years. 7 years. Then in how many years will it become fourfold? But that means 4 times itself. 4 times itself means 100 becomes 400. So right now you have to think about what is the variation occurred here. Here the variation is 300. There is an increase of 300. 300 in the sense these are percentages. So here a net increment of 100% occurred in 7 years. A net increment of 300% at the same rate of interest. In how many years it will become here we just consider it directly. So for 100% 7 years. For 300% what is the period here? So that is simply 3 into 7. For 100% 7 years required, for a cumulative, a total increment of 300% occur in 3 times of this period. So that is 3 into 7. So that is 21 years. So that is a simple logic towards these types of questions. So here the answer is first option, that is 21 years. Now the next question. So that is a question from time and distance. Or basic train problem. A train crosses a platform which is 250 meter long. The speed of the train is 36 kilometer per hour. The total time taken to cross the platform is 35 seconds find the length of the train. So here we are considering the length of train. Length of the train as x meter and speed of the train speed of the train. It is given that speed of the train as 36 kilometer per hour. What do you have to do if you need to convert? And most of the time problems we have to convert the speed kilometer per hour into meters per second because the length of the train and the length of the platform are given in meters and our answer options are in sec So here the time is in seconds and the answer options also in meters and kilometers also. That's maybe a confusing set of options. So here, 36 kilometer per hour, that will be equal to what meters per second? So this is simply 36 into 5 by 18 meters per second. So what is 5 by 18 here? This is 2 times, therefore this is 10 meters per second. Understand that point, that very important us how to convert a kilometer per hour into meters per second just multiply it with the 5 by 80. So then it is given that the time so time taken to cross platform is 35 seconds. So time for this crossing this crossing in the sense here we just consider what is the distance in this situation here the distance distance is nothing but while a train of x meter length crossing a platform of 250 meter 
that the total distance covered in such an activity that is length of the platform plus length of the train. So, that is 250 plus x meter. And the time taken for this activity, completion of this activity, so that is equal to 35 seconds. 35 seconds. So, what you can do? So, if you need to consider uh, and the speed also be here, speed is equal to 10 meters per second. So, therefore, this 250 plus x is equal to speed into time. So, what we equate here? Distance equal to speed into time. So, we have the distance that is 250 plus x and here the speed is 10 meters per second and time is 35 seconds. So, here x is equal to while multiplying this one this is 350 minus this is 250. So, hence the answer becomes 100 meter. So, this is the length of the train. So, the option is option 2. 17 question number 17 how many four digit numbers can be made with the digit 0 1 2 7 so that at least one of the digits is repeated in every number at least one of the digits repeated in every number. How to do it? First of all, we just consider how many four digit numbers can be formed. It's a case of four digit numbers. So, first we are considering step one. So, total number of four digit numbers. Total number of four digit numbers. So, here the repetition is allowable four digit numbers. So, how to do it? So, while considering that type of an operation, what you have to consider? You just consider four places, one, two, three, four, got it? So, this place except zero, any three values, one, two, seven, we can fill. So, that means that place can be filled in three ways. Zero cannot be filled in that place, therefore, you can fill any of these three numbers. And while we are considering the other places, here no restriction, 0, 1, 2, 7, you can fill, 0, 1, 2, 7, again, 0, 1, 2, 7. So, that means how many different ways you can fill those places. So, here this place, 4 ways, this is 4 ways, this is 4 ways. So, total number of possibility, that is 3 into 4 cube. So, what it will become? So, this is 3 into 4 into 4 into 4. And we know that 4 into 4 into 4, that's equal to 64. So, that, that's equal to 192. 64 into 3, 180 plus 12, that is 192. So, this is the total number of four digit numbers. It contains the repeated type of numbers. That means uh, some of the digits will repeat. So, maybe all the four numbers are same. So, like that, all the possibilities here. Out of this entire set of numbers, we have to remove the numbers without repetition. So, that's a simple logic without repetition. For finding this without repetition, so number of numbers without repetition. So, here we are considering number of numbers without repetition. So, without repetition. Got it? So, how to do it? So, while we are considering the four places together, one, two, three, four. So, without repetition in the sense different ways we can approach. So, how many different ways we can fill these four places together? So, if we have four uh, elements here and four places here, so the total number of possibility that is four factorial, no doubt. So, that is without repetition. But there is a problem. So, this place filled with the zero. So, that kind of a possibility also be included here. So, therefore, if we are constrained three digit numbers, so that means if it is start with the zero, Rest to three digits, how we can arrange here? That's in three factorial ways. So, out of this four factorial numbers, this three factorial numbers start with the zero. Got the logic clearly? First, we are considering how many different ways we can fill these four places. That is, we are not thinking about what will be the thousands place digit. So, it, gets to, it may start with the zero or not. So, out of that, we have to remove these three factorial numbers. So, these three factorial numbers start with the 0. So, if you want to consider the case of a four digit number, so definitely it won't start with the 0. So, therefore, 
What is 4 factorial? 4 factorial is 24 and 3 factorial is equal to 6. So this is equal to 18. So this many numbers, they don't have any repetition in their digits. We have to remove that numbers from the total 192 numbers. Therefore, the required numbers, required number of numbers. So that is 192 minus 18. So that's equal to 4, it's equal to 7. So the answer is 174. Clear? So this way we can catch. And here you have to consider the concept of uh, arrangement here. So the, here the first arrangement, that's not the application of permutation, it's arrangement only. So whenever we are considering the arrangement without repetition, at that time only we are considering the concept of permutation. So then the next question, two coins are such that the first has a tail and a head. That means that's a fair coin. It has a tail and a head. And the second has both heads. One of these coins toasted and the result is a head. So what is the probability that it is the coin with two heads? So actually it's a conditional application, but we can catch the answer easily. So first of all, we have to consider what is the total number of heads here. So if you are considering the total number of heads, that is equal to one head from the first fair coin and two heads from the second coin. So therefore here, total number of heads total number of heads so total number of heads one head from the first coin and two heads from the second coin therefore three heads here in total and we have to consider what is the probability that it is the coin with the two heads so therefore number of heads number of heads in the second coin heads in the second coin. So it is given that the second coin contains two heads. Therefore the required probability, required probability. What is the required probability here? So number of heads in the second coin that is two and the total number of heads is three. So that's the simple conclusion. So directly we can reach the conclusion that's equal to 2 by 3. So otherwise we have to consider it's a conditional arrangement, conditional kind of probability. That means, so first of all, we have to consider the case of two heads and that's based on the condition that the selection should be from the second coin. So directly we can approach the question through this way. And our 19th question, a shopkeeper buys a table for rupees 4650 and marks its price 20% above its cost price. If he allows a discount of 15% on it, find the selling price. Here, we just consider cost price, selling price, and mark the price. Got it? If there's cost price to selling price, so there is a profit of 20, means uh, a certain percentage of profit. But cost price to mark the price, there we have to consider that as a marker percentage. Therefore, we have to rearrange the structure or these data. Here I am considering cost price to mark the price. There is a markup of 20%. So that means that this is an increase of 20%. Got it? This is an increase of 20%. From there, offered a discount of 15%. So therefore, from this marked price to selling price, we just consider there is a discount of 15%. Understand, it's a kind of linear variation, successive variation. The price of a product first increased by 20%, further decreased by 15%. What will be the net variation occurred here? So that is the concept of successive variation. 10, 20 increased, 15 decreased. What will be the net variation here? This is, we can apply 20 minus 15 minus 20 into 15 by 100. So we already learned such a result that is x plus y plus xy by 100 that is the successive variation result. So if the quantity or there is an increment you have to enter that value as positive. If there is a decrease you have to enter that value as negative. 
So therefore, this will be equal to 20 minus 15, that is 5, and this value, it will become 3. So this is equal to 2. Positive 2 means 2% 2 increase. 2% 2 increase. And then what is the logic here? Or otherwise, this is the direct application of the result. Instead, without this result, how to do it? You just consider the initial value as 100. It's increased by 20%. That means it becomes 120. And this 120, it's 15% decrease. What is 15% of 120? 15% of 120 is nothing but 18. So we have to subtract this one. This is 102. Think about it. If it is 100, this is 102. That means 2% increase. So here we just consider it is given that the cost price of the product as 4650. So this is 4650. What is the increment here? That is 2%. What is 2% 2 of 4650? So here 2% of 4650. 4650. So what is 1% of 4650? That is 46.5. So therefore 2% 2 of 4650. So that's equal to 93. So here. 2 times of 5 is equal to 0, then 12, 3, then this is 93. Got it? So we got, so how to reach the conclusion? Here, 1% of 4650, 4650, that is equal to 46.5. Therefore, it's 2%. That means 2 times of 465 that will be equal to 93. So for getting the selling price, this is 4650 plus 93. So that's a profit. So therefore this is equal to 3, 14, 7, 4. So the selling price is rupees 4, 7, 4, 3. That is option 2. So this is the concept of successive variation. So successive variation result, if a quantity first vary by x person, then successively vary by y person, then the net variation is x plus y plus x into y by 100 percent. So this is a basic result. This is the basic result. With the help of this basic result, we can apply uh, these types of situations if uh, there is an increment reported here. So then you have to enter that value as positive. If a decrease there, you have to enter that as negative value. If one quantity is positive, another is negative, then the product become negative. That's why here we are considering this as a negative quantity. So, yeah, played the same concepts in previously some of the questions. So, keep it in your mind. So, next question. A man can row 12 km per hour in still water. If it takes him twice as long as to row up, as to row down the river, find the speed of the stream. It's a question from boats and streams. Here, first we have to consider speed of the man in still water. That is 12 km per hour. So, here we are constrained. Uh, speed of the stream. So first we are considering speed of the stream. So I just put that as y kilometer per hour. Speed of the stream I consider that as y kilometer per hour. There are two concepts upstream and downstream. So what is upstream speed? Upstream speed you have to consider upstream while reading that term itself you will get the idea so you are moving upward moving upward so while we are considering a climbing a mountain what will happen so you usually the resistive force act against us so usually that will diminish our usual speed so therefore whenever you are moving against the flow of the stream that situation is upstream speed so upstream speed is nothing but so what is your speed in still water minus speed of the stream because you are moving against the stream and the next concept that is downstream so now you are quite familiar that thing you can easily guess what is downstream speed so now you are moving in the same direction of the stream so at that time that stream speed will support you therefore your effective speed will become your speed in still water plus speed of the stream. That is 12 plus y. It is given that this traveling take up upstream took twice as long as row down. So therefore, time taken by upstream, so time taken by upstream is to 
time taken by downstream. So that is 2 is to 1. So therefore, if you are considering the ratio speeds, what will happen? So therefore, we can consider. So therefore, upstream speed, upstream speed is to downstream speed. So upstream speed is to downstream speed. That will be the inverse of this ratio. So that is 1 is to 2. We can utilize this idea for finding the value of y. So that is 12 minus y divided by 12 plus y. What it is? This is upstream speed by downstream speed. We reached such a ratio that is 1 by 2. So just make a cross multiplication here. So this is 24 minus 2y is equal to 12 plus y. What you will get? This is equal to. So while simplifying, this is 3y equal to 12. So therefore, what is the value of y here? So y is 4, 4 kilometer per hour. So that is the speed of the stream here. So the answer is option 3. Then 21st question is an algebraic one. Here uh, 2x plus 5y equal to 54 and x by y equal to 1 by 5. Find the value of x plus y. Here x by y equal to 1 by 5. I just consider that as x is to y is 1 is to 5. So what you can make a logical tricky conclusion here. So here we can consider x plus y is a multiple, multiple of 1 plus 5. Got it? What is 1 plus 5? That's equal to 6. So which among the given option should satisfy that condition? Because here x is to y, that's equal to 1 is to 5. Therefore, this x plus y is a multiple of 1 plus y. So 1 plus 5, so that's equal to 6. So there is only one possible option here. Therefore, the answer is option 4. Otherwise, what do you have to do? That's a tricky conclusion from the given data. So here we can consider x equal to 1k and y equal to 5k. So this is an algebraic kind of approach where k is called the multiplicative factor. So while we are considering this equation, this is 2x plus 5y equal to 54. Instead of this x, you just put the expressions in terms of k for this x and y and 5y that is 5k. So this is equal to 54. So while we are considering this one, this is equal to 27k equal to 54. Then what is the value of k here? Value of k is 2. If you will get the value of k is 2, what you have to find out? x plus y. Therefore, we have to find out what is x plus y. As per our assumption, we assumed those values are k and 5k. Therefore, x plus y is k plus 5k. So that is equal to 6k. We got the value of k is equal to 2. So that is equal to 6 into 2, which will be equal to 12. So therefore, the answer is 12. So we reached the conclusion earlier by using the simple concept of this ratio. So move to the next question. A garrison of 600 men had provisions for 28 days. After four days, a reinforcement of 200 men arrived. The foot will now last for how many days? It's actually a kind of questions from uh, the time and work. So here we are considering. Uh, it's a basic chain rule approach. What is a chain rule approach? I just consider it's in the form of variation wise approach. Here garrison of 600 men provisions for 28 days. So here we just consider the statistics will be like this. If there were 600 men, it is available for 28 days. 28 days. Clear? So what happened after 4 days? So in such a type of question, you have to consider this breaking method. After 4 days, for the remaining provision, so we are thinking about that remaining quantity of provision. Remaining, so provision. So now we are thinking about the remaining quantity of provision. What will happen here? So here, if the same 600 men existing there, think about the situation. If the same 600 men existing there, so the food or the provisions will be available for. 
how many days that is 28 minus 4 because 4 days already over so 28 minus 4 so that is 24 days so the provisions available for for the 24 days that's a simple logic if you are considering the same group of men at this point of time there is additional 200 men joined so if there is an additional 200 men joined what happened the strength becomes 800 men so at that time what is the required number of days this is the concept here we know that this types of situations product of these two values should be equal to the product of these two values clear so that's an inverse variation question because whenever the number of men will increase the duration will decrease because the quantity of provision is constant here the quantity of provision is almost similar to the quantity of work done work quantity of work so how to simplify this one this is simply 600 into 24 by 800 so consider the step of operation so here we know that this will be equal to this is 3 into 8 that's equal to 24 so therefore 3 into 6 that is 18 days so further 18 days further 18 days what is the total number of days that is 18 plus 4 that's equal to 22 there is not any options like this 22 therefore what they are expecting they are expecting 18 days so that's the answer 23rd question find the total length of a fencing a rectangular area of dimension 64 meter 36 meter so total length of fencing so length of fencing is same as the perimeter so length of fencing is same as the perimeter so that means we have to consider that outer boundary its total length so this is a rectangular area therefore how to find out the perimeter of a rectangle 2 into L plus B so it is given that this measures are 64 and 36 so this is equal to 200 meter so that's the total length of fencing therefore the answer is option 4 to the second last question the cost of oil is rupees 100 per liter after adulteration with another oil that cost rupees 50 per liter ram sells the mixture at 96 per kilogram making a profit of 20 percent what ratio does he mixes the two how you can immediately flash or got the idea so we can apply the allegation concepts in similar type of question because we are going to find out ultimately going to find out what is the ratio of their weightages for that thing first of all you have to find out it is given that while selling this mixture final mixture at 96 per kilogram he gained 20 percent so therefore we have to consider what is cost price of the final mixture so that's the important point here what do you have to do so this is 96 by 120 into 100 because 96 is the selling price that is 20 percent more than the cost price therefore for getting that value you have to do the operations like this so while we are simplifying this one we will get this is equal to rupees 80 so after simplifying this one this is rupees 80 per liter rupees 80 per liter so then we can apply the allegation here the first variety so that means the initial oil and the second one that is the second oil or after adulteration with another so cost of rupees 50 per liter adulteration in the sense it's mixed with another component right so therefore the uh, first first oil and the second oil so we are allegating with its cost prices the first oil it's cost rupees 100 and second oil it cost rupees 50 while combining them this mixture it cost rupees 80 so we have to write it at the middle so we just simply consider the difference 80 minus 50 so that is 30 and 100 minus 80 that is 20 so take this quantity as ratio this is equal to 3 is to 2 so this is the required ratio Hence the answer is option 2 got it so that's the allegation application so move to the final question a train traveling at the rate of 90 km per hour 
crosses a pole in 10 seconds its length. So in this activity, the length of the train is the distance covered during this period. So therefore, first we have to consider the speed of the train that is 90 kilometer per hour. So we already discussed the point similar type of train problems you have to convert that kilometer per hour into meters per seconds. So we just multiply it with 5 by 18. So we know that 5 times of 18 will be equal to 90 therefore this is 25 meters per second that is 25 meters per second and what is the time here so time is 10 seconds so length of the train that is the distance covered in this activity so length of the train that is nothing but speed into time so therefore 25 into 10 so that is equal to 250 meter so this is the first option so that's a very basic type questions so these are the important set of 25 questions from the CUT exam hope you all got the basic ideas of each and every questions so understand the point once you are fully mindfully involved in each and every sessions and its explanations so you are uh, getting a proper idea about each and every questions definitely the repetition of the concepts will be there and that you can tackle those questions with the help of the prior awareness about these questions from the previous discussions like that you can improve or enhance your knowledge so right now we can wind up thank you